Minutes of Heaven, we call the D1Baseball.com podcast. I am your host, Michael Patrick Rooney, born and raised in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. I am joined by the great hipster beer drinker of our era, Aaron J. Fit. Fitzy, how are you? Hanging in there, Runes. How are you? Yeah, hanging in there is well said. That's I'm, I'm going to ditto that. Um, we've got we, You got You can't have a good D1 baseball podcast without a Texan, Fitzy. So, uh, Kr, how is the Republic of Eastern Texas today? It's good. It, life is good. It's it's interesting. You know, Texas Tech gets a big series win over Texas, but the the folks in Austin are not real happy about that series uh, loss. Hey, by by the way, while we're on Texas, I was going to actually wait to do this. But in honor of Tennessee being number one for the first time in the history of the D1 baseball rankings, I'm going to give you a little surprise. Oh, what do you got? There Davey Crockett, my man. <laughs> oh, the original Davis volunteer. Crockett. Let's go. He's here. Davis. Oh, look Davey at Crockett's you, Mr. Crockett. going to join us today. The oh, original gosh. Tennessee volunteer. Kendall, that is Texas an, legend. That's an outstanding segue. You, if you guys mind indulging me for a second, can I tell you about my Saturday? Go I think it. I think Dave, you know Davey's, Davey's watching. Yes, Davey. I I almost had to call the governor of ten, Tennessee and just get an official pardon. So you guys were there Thursday night. Okay. Um, I was very aggressive in my criticism of um, Lindsey Nelson Stadium. I mean, I went way out over my skis. Really not sure. They came after happened. me too, by the way, because of you. Yeah, well, I apologize. So anyway, uh, you guys saw it. Vol Nation just filleted me on Twitter on Saturday. It was absolutely deserved. That's a self-inflicted wound. I would tell you guys the low point or the high point, depending on your viewpoint, was my wife, the great Jennifer Rooney, hysterically laughing going through my timeline. She's not even a Twitter user, but she was laughing uncontrollably seeing what these people were doing to me. So again, Self-inflicted, I deserved it. Um, was was I, my commentary was over the top. Um, I don't disagree with the the thought process, but I was I was I was a little uh, channeling my my Eagles fan right there. So um, there you go. Thank goodness the Vols are number T- one. Tennessee fans are feisty. I mean, they they had to put out a tweet today asking them not to go after Dylan Delucia after he said they were taking him lightly over the weekend. Yeah. We're getting feisty. Can I share this with you guys, though? Like, I'm going to put a positive spin on this. I'm going to go glass okay. completely full. Even though I, w- I bore the brunt of it on Saturday, like, how awesome is it that this Tennessee fan base is, like, cuckoo for baseball? I mean, yeah. they are, like, I-, I felt like a football broadcaster that had um, insulted somebody's football team. I mean, that, I think, is the glass um, full or half full uh, analogy is that, you know, of course, some of the things that showed up in my DMS did, were, did not make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Like that, that wasn't <laughs> awesome, but can you repeat some of those tweets? No, I, I, I <laughs> cannot and will not. Uh, there, there was, yeah, all kinds of parts of anatomies that were questioned and criticized. And it was, it was special, but anyway, <laughs> all in good, most not, I can't say all in good fun, most in good fun, but again, it, sorry, this sorry, is, Runes. That was my burner account. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, oh, so, so one of the one of the people that tweeted at me that I did not respond to, but he said he gave me this. You know, it's funny when you when this happens, as you guys know, you're veterans of this. I am not. You know, you get a lot of criticism. You get a lot of coaching, which I think is ironic. Like a lot of condescending coaching. And one guy came at me and said, um, "Hey, when you put your foot in your mouth, the best course of action is to stop digging." And I, I wouldn't say he was trying to lift me up. That was not constructive criticism. That was meant to injure. And I almost tweeted back at him, hey, is is this – and he, of course he had no avatar, right? So I was like, hey, either this is my dad or my wife's burner account. No one else would dare give me life counsel like that. When, so that, anyway. when, the, when the egg avatar comes at you, that's when you know, man. You, 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 done, you done screwed up. You're in trouble. <laughs> Done it, was, it was one of those bots out of St. Petersburg taking t- taking time away from his Ukraine oh, bots and gosh. going after the uh, Tennessee bots. Yeah, don't upset the egg avatars. Hell hath no fury like the <laughs> eggs coming at you. Okay. Oh. So on, on that note, though, can we can we talk about how good Tennessee looked over the weekend? Yes, I have to admit. I mean, going into that series, mm-hmm. like I didn't have any doubt that Tennessee would would play well. Um, I had doubts that. 
Chase Burns and Drew Beam would throw well in that atmosphere. Like I, like I think they're supremely talented, but that's a really tough place to go. We kind of talked about whether or not it's like intimidating or whether or not it's fun. But like still going into that place, packed house on Friday, and for Chase Burns to throw the way he did. Uh, because, you know, David Cypress saw him in the fall and said, like, he's got a huge arm. But, like, yeah. I kind of wonder if he's going to be able to command it in the spring. And, like, he's commanding it at an elite level. This is the thing that jumps out to me is, you know, I think we were justified in saying, all right, like in the preseason, let's mm-hmm. see these. It's an entirely new weekend rotation. Let's see these, you know, obviously with Tidwell being out. But let's see these guys establish themselves. Because if you look at the history of freshmen, even supremely talented yeah. freshmen, what these guys are doing it, it, right out of the shoot, it just doesn't happen like this. Mm-hmm. Like think about Kamar Rocker when he was a freshman. Sure, by the end of the year, he was a superstar. But remember the first six weeks of the year, he, he wasn't doing what, what these guys are doing, Beam and, and Burns. I mean, it took him a while to find his footing. And that's usually the case. I mean, Gunnar Hoagland, you know, all these guys like uh, Hunter Barco, you know, very uneven freshman year. I mean, he, you know, at the end of the year, okay, like it was a solid year. But like the, the way these guys are dominating, it's mm-hmm. just it's just unbelievable. And, you know, certainly – the lineup is is explosive. We, we figured it would be a very good offense again. Uh, it seems like they've answered, you know, any questions we had about the defense. They're just playing at an exceptionally high level in all phases, and their bullpen is so good still, uh, and they can mix and match. But, I mean, who else, you know, besides Florida State and, you know, a couple others, maybe Texas, who else has three horses they, they can, yeah. maybe, you know, six, seven, eight innings uh, on a weekend, three days in a row. There's just not a lot of that out there. That that stands out about this team more than anything else for me. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is like Chase Dolander, uh, you know, he was one of those guys that, you know, when I saw him at Shriners, like it was elite stuff. But, I mean, he got hit a little bit. And over the weekend against Ole Miss on yeah. the road, he had 11 punch outs and, uh, I mean, shut him down. And so, was, like, was he was electric. disgusting. And so, like, so so I guess my, my thought here my, or, or my question for the crew here is, like, Blade Tidwell was in the bullpen the other day. I mean, if he comes back, like who, like you can't kick somebody out of that ro- rotation, can you? No, and they're not going to. They're going to put. They're going to. Um, I've heard Tony V interviewed, and he's going to put Tidwell in the bullpen because he said exactly what you just said, KR. He's like, hey, this is yeah. no offense to what Tidwell has done because he was exceptional last year, but we can't, we can't rework this rotation. It's too. These kids have earned it, right? And so, yeah. let me ask you guys a question. The um, I got. I'll give you two thoughts, and then I'll give you a question. The only thing that is concerning about Tennessee, and this is like th- this is like nitpicking a nitpick, is like, hey, are they peaking too soon? Like that? Okay, are you playing your best baseball too soon? However, the counter to that is no, because Tidwell is going to be fresh. You know, like um, now here's the other nitpick. Okay. Jared Dickey looks like that could be a really serious injury, boys. Like that's mm. that plantar fasciitis stuff. Like I think they find out tomorrow, but that's something to keep an eye on. However, like they just put the Stevenson kid left and fine, whatever. Now you got an 80 runner in your lineup, right? It's like this is where the depth. It's like Tennessee has two SEC teams. They have their team that starts and then their backups. Um, so, um, you know, I worry about if Evan Russell got hurt at catcher. I, I have no idea what their backup catcher situation looks like. And this is a handful of a staff to um, to catch. But but let me ask you guys this question. What's a what's a as we sit here today, what's a better team? 2022 Tennessee Volunteers, 2021 Arkansas Razorbacks. Who's the better club? Hmm. While you're deliberating, I, I, let me I, remind you that Arkansas won every single weekend last yeah, year. Yeah, and, and they did the it super regional. And they did it against a much tougher non-conference schedule. I mean, no question. Look, look, with the back, what they did. I mean, uh, the road series at Louisiana Tech comes to mind. I know they had a great weekend. At, it was at the Globe Life last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. I mean, you know, yeah. their their season was incredible, incredible, all the way up to super regionals. Um, but I, I think it's fair to say. Tennessee has the better starting pitching, clearly. Clearly. Uh, by, by, no a wide, by a wide margin. You know, mm-hmm. Tennessee has a really good bullpen, but they don't have Kevin Copps, who's, you know, right. won the Golden Spikes Award. And then I think that for me, the position player group, I would still lead Arkansas. I mean, for one thing, I just think Opitz behind the plate was a separator. Uh, Russell's done a nice job, but, 
You know, I mean, it's it's not still not like an elite catcher. He's he's done a good job, but I think I was looking at the numbers. He's, you know, he's thrown out fourteen percent of base stealers. I mean, people can run on him, um, but he's receiving okay. You know, it's, it mm-hmm. seems like it seems like the blocking, like he's he's doing he's, what he needs to do to handle that staff. Um, but overall, I just think that Arkansas position player group last year was super elite, and I think this Tennessee position player group is very, very good to excellent, but not quite super elite, <laughs> if you yeah. will. Kendall, what's your thoughts on that? I think I, I think I lean Arkansas too. Uh, the thing about Arkansas is it's hard to do what they did, and until Tennessee does that, it's kind of hard to be like yeah, they're better fair. because what they did is pretty insane. Yeah, isn't it funny though? Like I, there is, I would take every like if you lined up their top ten pitchers, I would take nine of Tennessee's over Arkansas's in a hot second, except for the one that won the Golden Spikes Award. So it's yeah, like, and, you know, Wicklander had like a 180 RA or something last year. Like he, you know, he pitched a decent amount and he had a, he had a good year. Yeah. But, but not a complete year. Remember no. like Wicklander pitched himself out of the rotation. And then to your point, Fitzy, when he came back, he never looked back. He right. was phenomenal. At and, of course, and of course they lost Paulette, but like when Paulette was yeah. pitching well, he, that was another difference maker for them. Yeah. You know, this sounds really weird, but you know, like the only thing that might worry me about Tennessee is how well they're playing this early in the season. Yeah. It's, dude, it's really hard to, to play at that level all year long. It's really hard. Yep. No I mean, doubt. The only other team that I could think of that basically did it and sustained it all year recently um, was that, that Vanderbilt team a couple of years ago, 2019, mm-hmm. that won it all. Like, you know, and, and they didn't win every weekend like Arkansas did, but uh, they did win the SEC and the SEC tournament and, you know, ran all the way through the World Series. But, like, you know, Oregon State in 2017 – they went yep. fifty, what, fifty-two and four or something? Fifty-four yeah, and four coming into Omaha. Fifty-four and four coming. I mean, and they couldn't close a deal in Omaha, like, but they did everything else, you yeah. know. And it's like, I mean, they, uh, yeah. The year a year later, they were they were still very good. That's true. Didn't, didn't quite run the table the way the the, you know, the, the year before they had during the regular season or, or the way. Vanderbilt but it, yeah, it, it's a cool exercise because it reminds you like twenty thirteen Vandy that lost in a super to Louisville was that's still the best SEC season ever. Like twenty thirteen Vandy was twenty six and three. Even yeah. Arkansas wasn't as good as that. Um, you know, even twenty nineteen team Fitzy, you're right. Like Vanderbilt did things that no other SEC teams ever done. They won the league, they won the tournament, they won the national title, but they weren't the number one team. That was UCLA. Yeah. Right. So they had a little bit of cover yeah. there, but I think I think Kendall's point's a good one. That I, you yeah. know what it reminds me of, boys, is Virginia in 2014, where they went wire to wire as number one, like they wore that all year, and then got caught, you know, tripped up at the literally the six inch line, game yep. three of the finals. Johnny Norwood. That's right. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens later this week. This weekend will be really interesting for me. I think I think Vandy kind of got a reality check a little bit at South Carolina. So I think I think Tennessee is going to get get their best game this weekend, but we'll talk about that later. In the yeah, week. that'll be that'll be a great series, very compelling. Yeah, and almost better that it's in Vandy. It's almost better yeah. for humanity that it's in Nashville because mm. if this series Ooh. was in Knoxville, hide the women and children. I don't even know if that's appropriate to say anymore, but like, take you your know, mask for the kids. Seriously, like, <laughs> it's just not. Oh my gosh, but but you know, I mean, again, like to your point, Kendall, like what a performance by Tennessee. This weekend, hey, let's talk about Texas, Texas Tech, because I think sure. there was there was three series that I think were louder than the other ones. Um, at least I'll call them Tier One: Texas, Texas Tech. And why don't you kick us off there, Kendall? I'm just looking for takeaways from that series. Um, I think the biggest takeaway for me is that Timmy, Timmy Tadlock's just doing Timmy Tadlock mm-hmm. things. I mean, I'm, I was with you, Runes, after when I, after I saw them at Global Life. I mean, I thought this was the first Texas Tech team in a long time that had gaping holes. And like their numbers still aren't great, but like, I mean, Ty Coleman's hitting 340 for this team. I mean, come on. Uh, Kurt Wilson's getting around 300 now. Obviously, had the heroics over the weekend, but they're like, they're starting to get guys that, that, you know, it's not, it's not all the Jace Young show. Like they're getting Parker Kelly, you know, was it last week had three home or two weeks ago had three home runs in a game. Like there's yeah, just Parker Kelly was an out for four years and out. Yes. And now he's a yeah. baller. Like he yeah, was he a was defender the... only like hit ninth and catch the ball. And now he's like a game changing offensive player. Sorry to he, interrupt. He's you, the, crazy. he's a Lubbock version of Brendan Malone. Um, Seriously. But yeah, I mean, you just look at the guys they have stepping up. I, obviously I still think they have major question marks on the mound, but again, like they're, they're, a lot like you know Arizona was last year. Like if they can stay at home in the postseason, 
they could be back in Omaha, but just a, a wonderful coaching job done by Tim Tadlock. I mean, for this yeah. team to be 20 and five right now, I mean, that's pretty impressive because they had massive holes opening weekend. Yeah, it, it feels like, and we've talked about this, I think, repeatedly on, on the show, but not a vintage Texas Tech team. Like, if you were to stack up uh, all of the teams of the Tadlock era, I mean, I don't know where this one would, would stack up, but I'm guessing it would be in the lower third. You know? For sure, absolutely. Right? Just based on personnel and, 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 yeah. and on, you know, on paper, talent. And here they are, you know, they're – Whatever they are, what do we have them ranked right now after this week? <laughs> Seven, six. Okay, I mean, you know, I mean, six weeks into the season, they're right in the thick of it, and um, and and yes, this weekend was kind of a weird series. You kind of felt like in Lubbock, that place was going to be in a frenzy for you know a huge matchup against Texas. Uh, that's a like you you mentioned. I mean, if they're at home. That's such a huge advantage for me. That's one of the the best home field advantages in the country, way up there. And, you know, and they win a couple of kind of wacky games at the end. They steal home to win a game. They get a walk-off grand slam after losing the lead. Uh, was at the top of the 10th, if I'm not mistaken, in the second game. I mean, you know, they just found ways to win. Um, and then they get blown out in the third game. But at that point, you know, they, they got the series. So it makes you wonder, like, if, if Texas and Texas Tech played on a neutral field, Somewhere, I'm probably still taking the Longhorns, but I, I think you have to give Texas Tech credit for um, the way that they compete. And, uh, you know, they're, they're always going to fight. They're always going to fight under Timmy Tads. That's it. That's exactly it, Fitzy. Like, they, that series was chippy and aggressive, and, you are you know, you're not it, – it's like, to use the boxing analogy, you're going to take punches. That's not going to be a clean fight. And, man, Texas Tech just rose up, and they love that mm-hmm. kind of party. Like, it was impressive – how and and, you know like it it it, it forces me to review their resume a little bit and i i felt like when arizona just rolled them in globe life that was just confirmation bias for me like yep you're right texas tech's not that good this year and then they just started racking up those wins but it was you know i don't know like it's confusing like at iowa is that good is it not good i don't even know what to make of it and then man and and all that said i think you guys just alluded to it I mean, they could have got swept this weekend. I mean, that 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 result was possible, but they didn't, and they made sure they didn't, and so, and the, and they get credit for the series wins. So, um, I, I I I still am convicted that it's a good not. It doesn't feel like an Omaha team to me, but if they're a top eight seed, to your guys' point, good luck going in there. I, I mean, st- Stanford did it, but I don't know. I still have more conviction long-term in Texas or Oklahoma State, I think. Yes. Um, even like TCU, as, as long as Austin Krogh comes back, I mean, that's a really good week in rotation. So it's kind of weird to say, but like I probably have them fourth on my board in terms of like teams that I have faith in in the postseason right now. But we'll see how it plays out. I think we, I'm with you on that. Yeah. What? T- here's the thing on Texas, guys. Like I'm with, I, I, I left the series impressed by Texas Tech, but more convicted on Texas because – you know, like they, that was not um, a friendly situation for them. And that's the one thing I'm encouraged by by Texas. I mean, mm-hmm. Tanner Witt's not coming back, and that just is a problem, right? Like that just, that's the hole that they can't fill. However, man, they've tested themselves. I, I don't think there's a team that's been more tested than Texas. And, and you know, like schedule, road games, um, uh, uh, taking everybody's best shot. I mean, like every time you, you, you look up a college baseball highlight, it's like horns down. Like I know they it. are, I mean, they get everybody's best punch. And so that's got to serve them well down the stretch. I got to believe. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, Ivan Melendez had a massive week again, Trey Faltini. I wrote a bit about him today, but I mean, all of a sudden a guy that, you know, people, you know, talked about his offensive, you know, his lack of offensive production in the past. But, I mean, he's got eight bombs and he's hitting around 320. And then Murphy Staley, a guy that I wrote about in the fall that actually, like the day I was there with the most was the most impressive hitter, uh, he's kind of gone crazy offensively. So, I mean, they've got some nice offensive pieces. I'll just be very curious to see just how that the number three spot goes down the stretch with, with Lucas Gordon and guys like that. I actually would like to see them move Luke Harrison in that role. Um, I get it that they kind of like him in the bullpen. But, you know, he's a guy that can throw three or four pitches for strikes. And the thing I like about him, too, is he's never too high or too low. He's like a very, very steady freshman. And so, you know, if things don't work out with Gordon down the stretch, I I would take a look, a a long, hard look at uh, Harrison. Yep, interesting. All right, let's go go to the triangle. Fitzy, you were prouncing around the triangle all weekend with your fancy hipster beers, but also (laughs) writing great pieces on college baseball. It's kind of what you do. Um, 
there was some interesting developments in the triangle. Um, you could, you know, we had NC State showing that their series loss in Tallahassee was kind of their reemergence. Um, Georgia Tech on the receiving end of that. I, th- I thought Wake Forest and Virginia was mm-hmm. really an interesting series and a kind of a loud result for both. But you go, Fitzy. What 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 stands out from the triangle this weekend? Yeah, first of all, you know, NC State, it's it's kind of like the exact same thing that happened for them last year is the same weekend. It was week six. They were behind the eight ball. At that point, I think a lot of people had written them off. And one and eight. Week, they were one and eight in the ACC. One and eight in the point. ACC, yeah. and they swept North Carolina. And that kind of turned their season around. And in this case, they were only one and four in the ACC. Um but they swept Georgia Tech, and it feels like this is kind of the springboard for them. And last week they were right in it. And that's the thing is, you know, they had a heartbreaking loss in the rubber game, 17 innings against Florida State. They had a heartbreaking, I think, 12 inning loss to Notre Dame in one of those games. Like they could have, you know, Elliot said it that we could very easily be four and two instead of two and four, you know, after Friday night's game. Um, and, uh, you know, they just kept they kept on fighting. And it, it, it's worth noting that they they lost seven of their nine position guys. Like they had the same nine guys all year last year and Mm -hmm. sure. They brought in some nice transfers, some guys that did have some different one experience, but still there's an adjustment period. And you've got oftentimes, you know, always two, sometimes four freshmen on the field, you know um, there's going to be growing pains there. And we kind of thought all along that the the starting pitching with high Phil and and Willardson and then, and then of course Villeman in the bullpen, like those guys would be the the bedrock for this team. That would be kind of the, the guys that carried the load. And if I have one concern about NC state, it is that Sam high is not hundred percent, not even close. Um, You know, his stuff was, was way down this week. And Elliot event said that they're going to have to reassess. And, and, you know, if I, I don't know, I'm speculating, but I would guess that they're going to, maybe shut him down for a couple weeks and mm-hmm. rest him up, try to get him fully healthy because uh, they need him. I mean, that's so, that's the one thing that they got to have high Phil and Willardson eating innings for them. That's just the way that that team is built. So that's something to keep an eye on going forward. But I do feel like the, the position player group has emerged, improved. Uh, they didn't play very good defense the first five weeks or so, but I think those pieces are starting to gel now. I think maybe Josh hood taking over at shortstop, maybe a spot where he's more comfortable and, put a little pre- less pressure on Peyton Green if you put him at third base. But, you know, there's, they still need to work on the defense. It's not it's not finished, but so does Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's defense is a problem right now. Once again, you know, I thought I thought a few weeks ago that they had kind of addressed that, that it was a much better defensive team. But maybe part of it is not having Chandler Simpson. Yeah. Uh, but they just, you know, and their pitching is, once again, up and down, roller coaster ride. They just, they're going to hit, and that gives them a high floor because they're going to bash their way to plenty of – 10 to six wins, uh, but they have got to figure out the pitching and defense if they're going to reach their ceiling, which is in Omaha. They have Omaha ceiling, but not if they pitch and defend the way that they are right now. Omaha offense. What do you guys think about Kendall? I'd love for you to weigh in on this too. So it sounds like Maxwell, they've, they've kind of just punted the starter um, project and he's going to go back to the bullpen. And then you're right, Fitzy Chandler Simpson's not an elite defender, but he, right. he certainly takes their offense up another notch. And what, what do you guys think? Do you like Maxwell to the bullpen? Is that is that a good – is that just too much weight to carry, is no pun intended, as far as the um, him in the rotation? Yeah, he's he's just – he's a reliever. I mean, you know, and I, I don't blame them for experimenting with it, but um, he just fits as a bullpen guy. Just let him, you know, bring the fuel. And, boy, I mean, it was – Utterly electric, the game, the one inning that I guess I saw him more two innings. I can't remember, but he was really, really good. Like just, you know, struck out the side in order on like 99, 96, 97, just like blowing gas by dudes. Uh, I think he was not as good as second outing of the weekend. I I wasn't there for that, but uh, you know, he can be a weapon in the bullpen. I just don't think he has the the command to start. And um, it, you know, they, they don't blame them for trying it, but they've got other pieces that they can rotate in and out, but they got, they do have to figure out that piece for sure. Yep. Yep. Kendall, let me ask you a question. Wake Forest, Virginia, I thought was a very interesting series. I've mm-hmm. got some thoughts. Did you, um, so Virginia wins the series. Wake won game three handily. Wake has put together a very interesting little resume. They got a bunch of wins and they are four and five against the likes of Georgia Tech, Florida State and Virginia. I mean, that's, Four and five against that slate's pretty yeah. dang good. Um, what, did you did you leave that weekend more learning more about Virginia or more about Wake Forest? 
Uh, more about Virginia. Like, I didn't think Wake Forest actually looked bad. Like, I watched a couple mm-hmm. of those games. I didn't think Wake Forest looked bad. I just thought Virginia looked really good. And what's what's really crazy is I watched Savino start, and, like, you know, Aaron's wrote, written about it, like, countless times. But, like, like the stuff, you're not sitting there watching it going, like, wow, this is unbelievable stuff. Like, the slider is a solid pitch. But, like, you're not sitting there watching him going, man, he just blows me away compared to some of these other guys. But, like, he put together another really good start. You know, they had a guy making his first start of his career go out there and throw really well. What was it in the, was the second game? Yeah, Jake Berry. Jake Berry, yeah. Jake Berry, his yeah. His first, he was sick. Yeah, exactly. So, I just came away, like, very impressed with, like, just Virginia's style of play. It was very businesslike, very few mistakes. They they looked really good. They looked like a very well-rounded team. And, again, I didn't think Wake looked bad. They looked physical. Um, they just they just got beaten pretty good by a really good team. Yeah, I'll, Fitzy, I'll make your, a, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'll make a, a an observation on Jake Berry because he, mm-hmm. he was really good for five innings, five no hit innings, struck out nine. Eight of those nine strikeouts were on the fastball, and it's only you know eighty seven to ninety bump ninety one. You know, I think he had one ninety three in the first inning, but like it's not overpowering velocity. But you know, I was talking about this with David Seifert. I think he's he's got access to the metrics on this guy. I mean, he's a six foot ten left hander with a high slot, and it's mm. like. The, you know the combination of you know the, the 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 release height i guess and the extension um it it's it's almost unheard of i mean he cyphered said it's like it's like randy johnson type metrics you know and so that's why right. that pitch plays up even though it's not randy johnson velocity uh it's got it's got those kind of rare characteristics so anyway i just thought that interesting. was interesting um you know it showed their depth a little bit that you have a scratch a late scratch gersky who's been a good starter yeah. for him and you just plug in this second year guy and he you know gets the job done uh i thought jay wolfolk uh was really electric out of the bullpen he reminded me of like a like a Xavion curry kind of a look you know for georgia tech a few years ago mm-hmm. um you know, some, kind of a just strong, compact athlete, 91, 94 with a real good slider, uh, football quarterback, obviously a real good athlete. Um, he, he's, he's a fun piece. So, I mean, they, you know, yeah, they, they're, their offense is, as we know, is, is, is real. I mean, love Casey Sauke, uh, the freshman. I think I wrote this weekend. Like, for me, he reminded me of like an old school Virginia athlete, like those guys they used to have during yeah. the, uh, you know, like the, the Brandon Downs, you know, the McCarthy yeah, the 14 brothers. and 15 teams like those yeah. dudes. Yeah. Mike Pappy, yeah. like they always had those kind of like big athletic kind of rangy outfielders. Downs is the guy that Brian O'Connor said he reminds him of. And I, that was the first guy I thought of too, right? Right handed, you know, can run some power projection, but he's got a higher ceiling um, than, than any of those guys. Like he's a real, he's a real dude. And Griffo Farrell's a real dude at short. So, yeah, I mean, just, you know, the fact that they're, they're freshmen have turned out to be, and we, and we liked this class, but, they like they kind of like Tennessee's freshman pitchers. I think the Virginia freshman position players have proven more ready sooner than we thought that they would be. Uh, that's that's the thing. I mean, that was a question mark for us, and they boy, they sure have answered it. Those guys are real. Yeah, I would say this boys on Virginia. I if I'm Brian O'Connor, I probably am considering Brandon Neek going to the midweek. Because the thing about him, he's good. It, you know, he's mm-hmm. a funky lefty. He's got a chance to miss bats, but he's not a natural strike thrower. And as scouting reports are catching up to him, you know, Wake Forest was not super troubled by him. He walked a bunch of guys. And in fairness to Nick, he doesn't pitch that much in college. It's been hurt so much. He needs the repetitions. And so, you know, Barry, because of what you just said, Fitzy, like he can just kind of throw fastball and tell you it's coming and he's still fine. And so I might I might tinker with that. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Kyle Teal's got a ways to go behind the plate, but he's so... Yeah, I mean, I, I, he's he he's not helping Brandon Neek. Let's put it that way. He's that, a that to me pitcher. is a concern. That to me is yeah. if I had to, if you're trying looking for concerns for Virginia, I mean, I I, I counted at least seven balls that Teal just boxed, just like they hit him in the glove and he just didn't catch. And you know, yeah. fortunately, not, a lot of those were not with guys on base, so maybe it's just a matter of concentration. But I mean, like, you see that. Uh, you know, I mean, he's such a great athlete. You know, he's such an exciting player. The bat is real, real, real. But that's something to keep an eye on going forward. Yeah, he he's the catcher that if I was going to move him, I'd probably put him in center field, yes. which makes no sense. Like he's so he's too quick. Like if, if I was an umpire, I'd be dizzy because he's he's like a Tasmanian devil. And of course, he's boxing up back there. And then he back picks a breaking ball in the dirt. 
and throws an absolute rocket to second base and the guy's out by 20 feet. You know, it's just like, okay, well, yeah, you, you, that can't be taught, right? So He's got a that, cannon. Yeah. You know, it's, a fun, it's fun to watch him throw. Yeah, I would say this. Like, Virginia really looks the part. They're physical, athletic. They've got old guys. Brian O'Connor, the way they've structured the lineup, you know, you've got – Salky and Teal and, and O'Farrell and then Newell and those high upside guys. And then you sprinkle in a Devin Ortiz. You sprinkle in a, a Tappan who are, you know, those kids have been there for 10 combined years. It's really a brilliant lineup. I'll say this about Wake Forest, boys. They could win a regional. Like that is a very interesting team. They are very cognizant of how ugly it's been the last two years. Like their attention to detail in the game I had, they worked at bats. They're, they're still very big. And because they're big, their defense is going to be good, not great. But it's not a butcher fest out there. Ty Blankmeyer's made a big difference. Corey Mascara's made a big difference. I mean, Corey Mascara's out on the mound. And and you're just like, oh, my gosh, like this guy, we're going to have to bring him a, a, a glass of wine. Like he's he's animated. It's awesome. And you could tell the players love it. They just love it. And they got a real bullpen. I mean, Adler and Manasi at the back. I mean, that's two mid-90s arms with breaking balls. So anyway, I, I left there. And of course, I saw the game Wake 1. I left there thinking, man, like this Wake team is really interesting. They uh, they are defending so much better. It was an absolute disaster. It was an embarrassment last year, the way they played defense. But they're feeling 975 this year. Um, you know, like that's 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 quite good. You know, I mean, for, for a team yeah. to field it in the 950s or something last year, I mean, it was... Uh, a lot of room for improvement. So give those guys credit. I mean, they talked a lot about it in the fall, you know, yep. back to baseball IQ. Um, uh, the game that I saw on Saturday, they didn't take very good. I mean, they got one hit. You know, they broke up the no-hitter with two outs in the ninth on an infield single. Uh, they didn't take very good at-bats. And actually, I think Jake Berry even said, like, they kind of ex- he kind of exploited their aggressiveness offensively. But it seemed like they adjusted the next day, you know. They, mm-hmm. Like you said, the quality of bats were much better. So, so that I think bodes well for them. Also, I still think, you know, with their pitching too. I mean, it's it's they need more from Hartle. Uh, I've seen him twice now, and kind of he'll tease you a little bit, but he's not, you know, for 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 a very very high profile guy, like the most high profile freshman pitcher maybe in the country, um, hasn't quite been smooth sailing yet which shows you one more time just how impressive it is what Tennessee's guys have done because Josh Hartle is like you look at him it's like wow it's like a classic polished super polished lefty this guy should be carving and he's got a five six ERA you know it's like it's hard to come in as a freshman and just dominate it really doesn't happen often yeah, like you know, with most freshmen, you're just hoping they remember to bring the right colored jersey to the field that day and then Burns and Beam are just like carving fifth year seniors up like it's a joke in front of to your point Kendall in front of 12,000 people and Chase Burns is like oh yeah this is kind of cool I'll punch out 15 in front of half of the state of Mississippi that'll be more fun hey KR you wrote a really I have not dove all the way into it I've just skimmed it so far but I'm excited to get into it in my travels this week so you did a Rogers we rewind this week that was really cool you did players coaches teams and we've got a couple questions in the chat and the, the one that Max Gittleson did was how legit are the UCLA freshman arms? Um, I'll tell you guys that I talked to Chip Hale today and he mentioned that uh, Thatcher Hurd is a big leaguer. Like that, that was, those were his words, not ours. You, you're the one that's seen UCLA with your own eyes, KR. Um, and I, I'm fairly certain you wrote them up. Of course, they won the series at Arizona this weekend. What do you, what do you got on the Bruins? You're muted, by the way. I said I like their arms. I mean, I I was not at the game that Thatcher Hurt threw, but he threw really well at Shriner. Stitch wrote wrote a piece on him, but you know he's been ultra consistent. You know the the games I saw, uh, Alonzo Treadwell and Luke Jewett were both really good. Treadwell, I want to say was kind of eighty nine ninety two with a good slider, and uh, you know both those guys came out of the bullpen against Texas and shut them down. So you know th- those three guys have been pretty consistent. If you look at the job that. You know, you, you talked about Thatcher Hurd. I think he gave it one run of six innings against Arizona on the road, which that's really hard to do at uh, yeah, high Corbett. But, you know, Jake Brooks, not a freshman, but Jake Brooks on, on Friday only gave up two runs of six innings. So I, I really thought going to this weekend, I thought the story for me is I didn't think UCLA would be able to hold down their offense enough. And UCLA pretty much shut them down the whole weekend. I mean, even the game they lost, it's not like Arizona just went buck wild offensively. 
Um, you know, their pitching staff did a really good job. So I'm in, I'm impressed with what they did over the weekend. That that was a tide turner. And you know, we had a we had you know some people ask, hey, why isn't UCLA in the top 25 yet? I, I think one more weekend, yeah, uh, I think would put them in the top 25. But that's definitely a big step forward. That was a that was an eye catching weekend. I thought. Kendall, were you impressed that I was the only person to pick UCLA and still lost a game in the standings to you and Fitzy? Did that impress you or maybe not as much? Uh, a little bit. It, it's early, man. Hey, you know what? You, you guys get wrapped up in like the standings in week six, week seven. I'm playing the I'm playing the long game. Spoken okay. like a guy who's never won the picks competition. <laughs> Dude, I, I've won it like twice. I have no idea. I have no idea who's there. <laughs> I know Burke won it last year. That's all I could tell you. You're, right, you're, yeah. I think you're up like two or three games on me now, yeah. though. Burke won it last year in the sneaky under the radar crap talker, Burke Granger. I see you. I see you. Well said. Yeah, um, yeah that the, the the Pac-12 as a whole is really interesting, Runes. I mean, so you have Arizona. I think UCLA is a team that certainly will be in the postseason. Um, Oregon State. I mean, they just continue to win. Like the like over the weekend against Cal, like they're pitching not very good. But guess what? They were able to come back in the eighth and ninth innings in one of the games and win. Uh, Cal tied them up in the ninth, and they hit a bomb. Uh, Oregon State hit a bomb in the, in the top of the next frame to win that one. Uh, so they're getting it done offensively. Then you look at Oregon uh, and the job that Waz is doing up there. Uh, you know, with with that lineup, and you know, you know, the shade Colby was it Colby Shade, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Brennan Malone, Drew Cowley. I mean, they're really getting it done offensively. So the, the Pac-12 for me is really interesting. And even Stanford, like I get that Stanford, you know, isn't playing great. They did sweep the Washington State series, but it was a close series. But like they're not playing great. But, I mean, they're they're a team with a lot of upside. So I actually think the Pac-12 is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I, I think Oregon is really interesting. And this is a big weekend for Stanford now. At Oregon State, like they're – you know, they're carrying tool right now is one win against Arkansas, right? Like, what else is on the Stanford resume? I, I don't see a lot. I feel like Cal's got to get going. Like Cal, Cal's lost heartbreaking series to Oregon State. Um, Cal beat Arizona. Cal won the series. No, they lost the series to Arizona, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so the, and that was game three. You know, the the I mean, Cal has had heartbreaking series losses but they're starting to run out of resume building weekends. So I think you're right, Kendall. The Pac-12 is really, really interesting. What do you got? Visa V16 is a question in our chat. As an Arkansas fan, I'm really happy that they've won the games when it seems like they've not played their best. I think Dave Van Horn would agree with you, Visa V. Um, Could they have been off because of the weather? When it warms up, the bats will heat up. What do you guys think? I mean, That's a good question. Um, Maybe. The weather's been terrible. Arkansas is a weird team. Um, when I saw them, the weekend I saw them, they weren't very impressive. But the, the thing about it, and maybe it's just – maybe it's Ron to just give them the benefit of the doubt. The thing about it is all those guys in the offensive lineup that have been kind of slow to heat up, all those guys for the most part are proven commodities. So it's only natural to think they're going to figure it out at some point. Um, you know, Peyton Stovall early on uh, was struggling. But, uh, you know, he I think he's over 300 now. You know, Michael Turner – has been a big addition. You know, Michael Turner for me is like their X factor because when they lost like Casey Opitz, like that was a huge piece of that team. And, you know, he's been pretty solid behind the plate and he's been very offensive for them. Michael Turner for me is like their X factor and Jackson Wiggins as well. You know, Wiggins is throwing really well. They I mean, uh, At least it's three starters making every start, right? Like that's yeah. a positive development. Yep, for sure. Yeah, and you know, it, the, the pitching, I, I think we're not worried about. They pitch very well, uh, really. And, and, you know, Connor Nolan is, is bounced back the way that they hoped he would. There were signs of that coming in the fall. Um, and he's, you know, again, he's not a flashy stuff guy on Fridays in the SEC, but he's going to gonna give you a chance. Yeah. He'll compete, give you a chance. Uh, Wiggins is a huge stuff guy and has taken a big step forward with the pitchability. And Hagen Smith, as we've talked about as a freshman, we're very high on and he pitched well this weekend, but yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about the offense at all. I, I love the personnel. I mean, and if you look at the numbers like Caden Wallace and, and Robert Moore have put up to this point um, and they've been okay, but there's, those guys can be superstars. They have shown that oh, yeah. already and they're going to get hot. There's no question about it. And when they do that changes the whole complexion of that offense. And there's other guys too, like, um, you know, battles, I think, there's more offense in the tank there. I still believe that. Um, 
you know, Slavin's as well, certainly. Boy, he's, I mean, there's some guys that are really good players around the country that have just gotten off to really poor starts, and his, his numbers are ugly, but, like, he's hit before. Like, yeah. it, mm-hmm. it's, it's there, you know? This guy can do it. It's just it's baseball, and slumps happen. Well, and what's scary about Arkansas is they're number two in the country, and they haven't even played anywhere near their potential. Oh. That's 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 scary if you're an opposing team. That's yeah, they 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 could be that classic get hot late team and that that yep. you know the opposite yeah, of last year. Yeah, the opposite of last year. By the way, Austin Canell, if you're related to Kirby, your son can really pitch and we love him. Your question <laughs> is what did I think about Vol Twitter getting after me? I did address that earlier. Let me give you the cliff notes. One, didn't enjoy it. Two, totally deserved it. Three, my wife laughing hysterically at my timeline. That felt not great either. Uh, four, more importantly, I love how in love with college baseball Tennessee fans are. Count me absolutely in on that. Can't wait to see Hawkins Field this weekend. It's going to be like half orange, half black and gold. That's going to be an awesome, awesome scene. T- tickets are going for like two grand. No, really? Yeah, I saw it last night on what, like Vivid Seats. It was like two grand. It's crazy. It's awesome. So awesome. Except for if you're – paying that kind of money but yeah uh, it's it's all good brian wiedemann's in the chat beavers battling able to sustain or just early season flash i think we think they're real yeah they're they're oh, yeah. we we wish they didn't have injuries in the rotation but yeah that they're um they're good they, they got they got a lot of weapons i think he's asking about the batting not, um which, oh, batting, not which i think we i think we all agree is is legit this is a yeah. really good lineup um uh, really good lineup i mean just balanced and and uh, the wonder from down under runes, Travis Bazana keeps on coming up with big hits. Striking. They'll go both racers. You, you know, you are all over this guy in the preseason in the fall. You even drafted him on your Delco boat racers team. As you mentioned, you were right. He is uh, he seems like an awesome player. Can't wait to, to get a live look at this guy. I planning to see the beavers earlier this year, uh, later this year, but uh, it's, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I love the, the balance of depth. And there's guys that we haven't talked that much about, like Gavin Logan's had a really nice year. And, uh, you know, Garrett Forrester was somebody that we all were really high on, and he hasn't really hit for power. But, like, look at the walks, 27 walks and, and 13 strikeouts, you know? I mean, just the, the way this team controls the zone and it's competitive at bats, just avoid, same thing. A lot of guys uh, who just battle you. It feels like it feels a little bit like an old-school Pat Casey offense. Yeah. The thing that's going to be interesting for Oregon State is that, and again, they're another team that's trending to host in the postseason. That's a really tough place to play. But, you know, game two of a regional, game two of a super regional, they're going to be chucking a freshman out there and Jacob Kamatz making his 15th start. You know, like that's a that's a long journey for a true freshman. And, you know, Kamatz is talented, but he's not Chase Burns. He's more in the Drew Beamish mode, maybe not quite as gifted as drew beam but he Kamats is good like he's he's gonna be fun what's so, his top velo uh Kamats, the top velo i had was probably like 90 91 but it's more yeah. he can spin it like he he pitches off of his curveball so hey let me ask you guys this question um there was some cool individual performances like really cool individual performances mm. this week so i'll throw them out at you and you guys tell me your favorite one mm. ivan melendez reached base 13 straight times this week in a huge series like how cool is that he's not just a slugger he's really he's become a good, good baseball player josh hatcher who was a you know as a national championship ring at mississippi state transferred to kennesaw state because he wanted more consistent at bats nothing wrong with that hit for the cycle twice this week so good on you josh hatcher we mentioned kurt wilson i I said to somebody today that kurt wilson walk off steal of home in game one walk off grand slam in game two that was actually in the original script of the sandlot but hollywood threw it out because it was too unrealistic it's uh, it's not even possible but kurt wilson did it uh jake geary of yale four home runs in one game that'll work two of them grand slams i believe yeah you're right rbis Chris Sargent of Southern Miss, five home runs on the week. And then uh, Jake Berry, like you mentioned it, Fitzy, Jake Berry and that and and Jay Wolfolk and I forget who the other reliever, Kasanovich, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, they got to they got the they got to twenty six outs without giving up a hit. Almost through a no no. So, and it was and it was almost saved. Uh, it was a diving stop by Justin Rubin at second base. Tried to flip the second for the force, just couldn't quite almost, they almost got the no hitter. They're they're that close. Yep. Yeah, it was crazy. So, and, and which which what was your favorite of those? God, 
I mean, what Kurt Wilson did was super cool. Super cool. Super a straight, cool. A straight steal of home to win a game and then a walk-off Grand Slam, you know, against the team that they did it against. All Have else. you guys ever seen that? A steal of home and the pitcher, like Aaron Nixon didn't even throw the baseball. He didn't even. The baseball that never was very, even it was, was like he was. It was almost like he was like cha- like thinking mentally and just kind of like getting himself yeah. ready. Like he never even looked up, especially against a right-handed pitcher, right? I mean, that's yeah. just like. I, I would say this. I think that's on Skyler and Messenger at third. Like I think you you got to be yelling at the pitcher immediately. But Although, I mean, it might have been loud. I mean, you never know. Yeah, I mean, you never know. Yeah, you're right. Like somebody's got to do something, right? Like it was it was just like shell shock mode. Um, well, how about you, Kendall? Kurt Wilson, or was there another one in that bunch that really stood out? Kurt there? Wilson, but hey, can I throw another Southern Miss guy out at you? Because I Please. wrote about him today in my column. But, you know, Aaron saw him his freshman fall, and he was a guy that, you know, went to Southern mm-hmm. Miss, chose them over Ole Miss and Mississippi State, and that Slade Wilkes, um, he had four home runs over the weekend, five home runs for the week, and 10 RBIs for the week. Um, he's a guy that, you know, struggled last year as a freshman, but he's hitting over 320 now for Southern Miss. Like he's kind of he's kind of becoming that guy that people expect him to be out of high school, and that's donkey strength now. Like oh, yeah. if he he, I mean, like there, there's easy twenty home runs in there if he gets rolling. Oh yeah, it's it's really really easy juice. You're right, and, and he can drive it to the opposite field. And he is an athlete. I think he's DHing right now. I know he had a knee issue in the fall. I don't know what his health status is, but I know that he's strong and he's hitting home runs by the, by the bunch right now. So I think he ended the week with zero home runs. And now he's got five. So uh, him getting hot is a good sign for an offense that looks like it's really firing on all cylinders at the moment. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of firepower there. There's a lot of depth on that pitching staff. I mean, to me, you know, I've, I've said it since the fall. I think I tweeted it the day I saw them in the fall. Like this is a top <laughs> 25 team. And yeah. like, it still bothers me that we haven't had them in the rankings yet, but like they, you know, just when we're about to rank them, they go and get swept by DBU or this or that. Mm-hmm. And there's all, you know, it's always one thing that's just kind of held them back, but this weekend they get Louisiana tech. Whoever wins that series is going to be ranked. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. Two, you might, might want to hide the kids for that one. There's going to be a lot of offense yeah. in that one. Yeah. That's a big, I didn't realize that like, that's a big rivalry in all sports, like football, they get after mm-hmm. it. And Hey, it's let's, chippy. let's end on this. Let's end on this boys. So, um, the mid majors. So Charlotte had a huge weekend. DBU mm-hmm. huge weekend taking that series from Maryland. Uh, I'll, I'll reference Chip Hale again today. Um, we tape our Sirius XM show, and Mike Fern and I talked to him today, and he he basically said he said I'm not willing to like you know put put a flag on it, but I'm not so sure Texas State isn't the best team we've played this year. Mm-hmm. That's what Chip Hale said. And you're just like, and he he referenced uh, Tristan Stivers at the bolt at the end. He said, and it, you guys are better mm-hmm. at spin rate than I am, but he said like Tristan Stivers breaking ball, it's like 3,200 spin rate. Like he said, I, I don't even it's know elite. what my college hitters are supposed to do with that. Like it was, <laughs> it was crazy. So um, yeah, what what are your guys' thoughts? DBU or Charlotte and or Charlotte, um, those those seem like pretty loud results to me. Yeah, I, I certainly. You know, you, you go on the road. To Old Dominion, first of all, uh, a team that had gotten off to a great start, a team that was very nearly in our top 25. All four of those teams in, in Conference USA, um, that's a good top tier with FAU not far be- behind that group, uh, but they are, for me, behind that top four. Um, yeah. Old Dominion, Charlotte, Louisiana Tech, Southern Miss, all of the, those teams. I can see any one of them going on a run and hosting a regional. you know. Um, and uh, so for Charlotte, which is still not quite, 100% healthy. They're getting there. You know, we saw a little bit of David McCabe this weekend, but he's still not back to full strength. I think Josh Madol is back, but he's maybe not quite 100% yet either. Like they're still kind of figuring it out health wise, um, but they're getting there. And and to go out there and uh, and and bash Old Dominion the first two games, and there's a wild slugfest. I think it was 12 to 11 that they lost in, in the finale, but. Um, great weekend for them. I'm looking forward to, to that series between Charlotte and, and Southern Miss in, in two weeks. I think um, that's where I'm going to be for at least part of that weekend. That, that's going to be an intriguing matchup. That's in Charlotte or it's down in Hattiesburg? In Charlotte, yeah. Awesome. KR, talk to us about DBU. I feel like this is a team that we need to get up to speed on. Uh, can, I, can I talk about somebody else real quick? Yes, please. Yes, please. So I'm going to do what I always do and take up for the West. And can we talk about, can we talk about San Diego? So get this. Please get, get your this. Torero Brock, on. Brock Ungrich in his first season, series win over Oregon. 
their only series loss so far this year is to DBU, and they lost the series finale in the ninth inning. So that's their only series loss. They're five and one in the WCC. They're seven in the RPI. I know, Aaron, close your ears. They're seven in the RPI. And Bryson Motts has 60 strikeouts in 37 and two-thirds innings. I don't know if they have staying power. I haven't seen them yet. But what they're doing right now in that first year is really impressive. By the way, boys, I looked this up today. WCC, guess how many teams? There's 10 teams in the league. Guess how many are under 500? I'm going to say not very many. I'm going to say like two. Fitzy? One. Two is the answer. I was going to say so, two also. But. Yeah, so I mean, like, like it's uh, it, two was spoken for. Yeah. But, um, I mean, that's good, right? Like, they're, I just feel good. like they're going to kill their own RPI. The, the problem that they always run into is that they eat each other alive. That's um, it. Like the, like the American. Um, and then everybody gets dragged down closer to 500. And, you know, you need to have some separation. Um, a couple of teams, at least, at the top. With, mm-hmm. with some cushion between them and the rest of the league, if you're going to get any kind of at-large consideration. So we'll see if that happens. Right now, uh, it does seem like San Diego's got a chance to make that kind of run because, I mean, they played a couple of good series to start conference play, uh, like Kendall said, and they're, what's their conference record? It's pretty good, right? They're 5-1, fi- they're five five and and one. One, and 15-7 overall, 3-4 of four from Oregon. I lost 2 out of 3 to DBU. The two losses are 8-6, 5-4. 2 of 3 from Grand Canyon, 2 of 3 from Pepperdine, swept St. Mary's. Yeah. And St. Mary's had gotten off to a really good start too. Yeah. So yeah, there, there was, and, and Grand Canyon is, is, you know, had a few ups and downs, but we like their yeah. team and they've actually had a pretty good year to this point. So that's, it's a, a quality road series win. Um, and, and that Oregon series, by the way, was three out of four, you know, so even, yeah. even louder, hard to win a four game series. Yeah. Really like this team. The only reason they weren't ranked this week, um, was the, I would say probably the showing against, um, UNLV and the, the Tony Gwynn legacy. They lost twice to UNLV, so they have two losing weekends. That that in DPU, but yeah. re- regardless, it's a nice body of work, and they're not far outside the top twenty. Yeah, they're they're in the mix. And, and runes real quick on DPU. I think the big thing for me is, you know, the one thing we kind of talked about over the last few weeks is like, hey, when is Jace Greedy going to get hot? And he won Conference Player of the Week honors. He had a really big weekend yep. uh, against Maryland. So I think DPU is kind of ta- taking on. The, the aspects of, of a team that we kind of thought they'd be coming into the season. Uh, they, they've got a really nice resume right now. And again, I mean, it, it won't stick, but I mean, they're number one in the RPI right now. And my boy, Ryan Robleski's back. I, I didn't yeah. realize this. Ryan Robleski, full disclosure, played college baseball with his dad. Great <laughs> friend. Um, love Ryan Robo. Uh, but he had broke, he had um, hurt his thumb sliding right in the preseason. So he's finally back. And um, Fort Worth regional MVP. So it's just another you know athletic bat they add to that lineup and so and we know that the missouri valley has absolutely they have the keys to the rpi machine we know that not this year positive they don't so dbu's at one and the next team's at 71 Ooh, Mm. yeah not not a very good year in missouri valley which means dallas baptist probably has a very gaudy record in that league this year Although I think I feel like Illinois State is frisky. Is their record? They played a really rough schedule. Yeah, but. I think they played. They played Purdue really close, and heck, I mean, they almost won two out of three from Arkansas. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, interesting. I, I'll I'll just finish with this. I mean, Kendall, I think you were all over DBU in the fall. Uh, I think you were spot on. You know, and and I know that they. They kind of stubbed their toe out of the gate there, losing that that series to Semo. But since then, I mean, if you look at their body of work, it's 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 all kind of name brand, high mid major type programs. Uh, Sam Houston State, San Diego, take two out of three of the road, sweep Southern Miss at Oral Roberts, perennial regional team, and then Maryland, a ranked team that they took two out of three from this weekend. That's that's five good weekends in a row. Yeah, uh, good body of work. I really like their personnel. Um, you know, a lot of guys back from that team that was so much fun to watch in, in, uh, in the postseason last year. I was at that regional and walked away impressed, you know, and with a lot of those guys who are back. And, uh, and then they did a good job kind of beefing it up a little bit. You know, you had a Jacob Metter, you know, who was a big time recruit for TCU. You know, if you remember, I mean, this guy was, he was a big name guy that our friends yes, over was. at PBR, they, they loved him. Didn't work out at TCU, but he's become an ace, a legit Friday yeah, guy. Know. Uh, for for Dallas Baptist, and so did a good job reloading in the mound, and 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 I think this is one of these years. This is that program like East Carolina, you know, they're just knocking on the door. One of these years, they're going to break through to Omaha. This could be the year. 
Yeah, it Love could. It. It's kind of it's kind of funny. I was sitting there with uh, Dan Hefner during fall workouts, and we were kind of talking about Luke Hefner, his son, who's a freshman. And he goes, you know, I think he's got a shot to play play a little bit this year. Like he's got a shot to be okay. Well, he's hitting 300 as a freshman for them, so he's doing okay. He's a star. He did, hit, Luke Hefner's a future Missouri Valley Player of the Year is who Ooh, he is. He's a like really it. good player, and he plays like I saw him a little bit on the circuit and plays like a coach's kid. Like you know, he's he's going to be really good. Hey, let's finish with the uh, the questions. Max Gittleson, yeah, that's really cool. Like Oregon State's playing Nevada in a AAA park. Arizona State's playing UNLV in a AAA park, both in Nevada. That's super cool. Rick Jackson says, thank you for all you do for college baseball. I enjoy all the content and go Big Orange. Thank you, Rick. Um, I can't I can't thank the Tennessee fans enough for making Saturday the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, self-inflicted, man. You, you, you open, as my dad likes to say, you keep opening your mouth. Something dumb's going to come out of there. And sure enough, uh, how far off is UC, USC Upstate? I mean, it just feels like the Big South, the way Campbell season going. You got to win yeah. that tournament, right? Is that kind of how you know that, that goes? You know what? That's kind of so. It's kind of interesting. And Aaron probably knows more about those guys than, than I do. But like, you know, if I remember that, I mean, they had a good year last year. Well, yes. Aaron, what was the ace's name for them last year? Jordan Marks. That's right. Oh, that's they had right. him. Yeah, that's right. And so, good like, call. you know, I noticed him the other day. I mean, they're off to another really good start. They're sixteen and eight, five and one in the Big South. And like y'all said. Um, with with Campbell kind of being a little bit little bit seesawy, I mean they've got a shot to win that league and kind of em- emulate what they did last season. Yeah, and, and I like the position player group. I mean, some of the the guys that they've got back, like Devin mm-hmm. Buckner and um, Noah Myers, who I think was the transfer from South Carolina, and um, he he's done a good good job there. Brought some athleticism, some speed to that mix, and uh, Noah Raybon. I mean, some of these guys that have performed uh, there's a, there's a nice group of veterans there, and um, it seems like you know. They're, they're competitive in the mound as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I said last week that Campbell's going to win that league by five and a half games. Um, I don't know if that's really going to happen or not. <laughs> but I, I still, the way the way Campbell looked this weekend, um, I, I'm going to stand by that prediction. I think Campbell wins that league handily. Uh, but Upstate is, is, is yeah. I mean, those guys, Mike McGuire does a great job. I really, you know, he, he was a good coach in Moorhead State. Um, he's made an immediate impact since – he arrived at upstate and turned them into a legitimate factor, you know, a program that was never a contender and they are a contender now. The uh, Fitzy, you, you're very clever right there. Look at you. You're taking on all the fan bases in the big South with a big <laughs> de- demonstrative <laughs> statement. Whereas I'm trying to take on all of Tennessee's fans. And I want you guys to know that I will be better. I've ordered the Kendall J Rogers speak politically savvy one Oh one. It's a seven CD set. I, I <laughs> hopefully it will be here Fred, sooner. Fred McGriff does kind of intro <laughs> for it. <laughs> Tom Amansky and Kendall Rogers on not upsetting fan bases. Seven CDs comes with a all I know is bowl of soup. All I know is we have one back to back to back podcasts here. Yeah, baseball. Oh, hey, by the way, I've been getting so many compliments on the Boog Shiambi Open. I'm sure you guys are the same. Like that totally j- legitimizes us. It's about time we're legitimate. It's only taken us <laughs> eight years of doing this to, to have a yeah, legitimate had, intro. Yeah, oh, I had a God. company I was talking to the other day about a, a sponsorship thing, and they were kind of like, wait, you have Boog do your intro? So Kendall's yeah, like, game changer. Like, Kendall's like, the guy was begging us, and we just yeah, He was. He's like, can I please be <laughs> Can I please be on the, on the podcast? Oh, gosh. What a perfect way to end. And you're right, Fitzy. Consider that podcast one. Boom. Wear it, podcast. Um, that's it. Anybody, anybody watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. That is very helpful. We will be back on Thursday, boys. It might be just you guys on Thursday. I got to look at my flight situation. I'm flying to Fayetteville. It's going to be Arkansas, Mississippi Ooh. State live and in person Friday night. Super fired up for that. Yeah, the great that, that series is a Captain little different Morgan. on paper yes. right now than it looked yes. about two months ago. Why do you think Mike Rooney's going to it? And not oh, Kyle yeah. Peterson and Chris Burke. The, we're sending the D squad, Fitzy, but that's D all right. Squad. The D squad. <laughs> Chris from in, Louisville is going to be in the house? He is in Delco. No, Chris from Louisville will, will be going to uh, a much more primetime setup. But that's all right. Any They can send me to Fayetteville anytime they want. Count me in on that. That is college baseball. Go heaven. go get the smoked wings at Sassy's in Fayetteville. Ooh, you won't be okay. disappointed. And, and, hey, Mississippi State's not dead yet. No, they're right. not dead yet. They just won a, a nice series. They needed it. 
uh, against Alabama competitive series, a couple of one, one victories for him. Um, and, and I was encouraged by what Preston Johnson and, and, uh, and Parker Stinnett did in that rotation, starting maybe get some stability there. So keep an eye on them. They're, they're not yeah. dead yet. I, I have an like... R- RJ Yeager resurfacing the, the phrase Yeager bombs for the first time since college for me, at least. And that, that was yeah. never positive. So I'll past. say this real quick too. Like Alabama, like to me, that series was like a microcosm of Alabama baseball over the last two years, three years. Like they, they mm. had that series won twice or like games in that series won twice. And like everything just totally imploded. Like Alabama played a really good series and still yep. lost two out of three. Like what? if I'm Brad Bohannon, like I'm literally just like ah. There's they're they're kind of snake bit right now because the same yeah. thing happened against Florida. Uh, yep. Three games that they were in, they were in all three of those games uh, and lost two of them, but they didn't get swept. And um, in Texas, they were in all three of those games yep. and, they, and they didn't Real win any close. of those. So yep. it's just like. They're just right there on the edge. It's just a, it's just a razor's yeah. edge in this league. You got to be able your, to win some of those close games. To your point, Fitzy, though, snake bit in two and four. You can kind of take that. You're okay. You know, like you're you're. It's it's not ideal because you've to Kendall's point, you've left some chicken on the bone. But yeah. at the same time, you, you haven't buried yourself. Yeah, so. to an extent, you just have to avoid getting swept on the road in the SEC. Yeah, fair enough. So, boys, outstanding. That was super fun. I needed that. Uh, Time to finish the laundry. We'll catch everyone on Thursday night. Uh, Peace out. And 